Hello and a warm welcome from Hamburg. I'm Karen Helmstead and it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this 10 years EU Modex special. As many of you know, EU Modex is celebrating its 10th anniversary and normally it would have been marked with a fanfare event in Brussels. But due to the current pandemic situation, that was of course not meant to be. So here we are taking it online with a special broadcast. And the upside of that is that many more people can actually tune in. So welcome to you all and glad that you could be with us. Well, before we begin, for anyone wondering what EU Modex is all about, let me bring you up to speed. Modex stands for Module Exercises. And within the framework of the EU Civil Protection Mechanism, these are training exercises that cover a whole range of response capacities for disaster relief. Now, the idea is to keep our civil protection teams and experts fit and ready for action in the event of a disaster. And depending on the type of disaster, that action can take many different forms, such as search and rescue operations, or setting up power or internet grids, deployment of medical personnel, or even specialized teams to deal with chemical or nuclear waste. Well, EU Modex is financed by DG ECHO. That's the Directorate General for European Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid Operations. And over the years, it has trained experts and capacities from 33 countries for international missions. Exercising together has helped those teams to be better prepared for real life emergencies. So this is a chance to honor the EU civil protection community, to celebrate 10 years of their incredible commitment, and to let EU citizens know that this crucial work will continue to help keep them safe and hopefully to benefit the global community going forward. Well, the ultimate goal of EU Modex is, of course, better preparation. And my first guest knows what it's like to be ready to deploy in the space of just a few hours. Anja Brahman is our resident expert on the beginnings of EU Modex. She's been involved in relief efforts all over the world, and she still deploys as a volunteer for Germany's Federal Agency for Technical Relief. Now, she's currently head of the Civil Protection Unit, Supervision of Fire and Rescue Services in Berlin, and it's a pleasure to have her in the studio with me, a real life person. A warm welcome to you, Anja Brahman. Hi, Karen. I'm happy to be here today. Yes, such a thrill. So as a national uh, seconded expert to the European Commission from 2007 to 2012. You were involved in EU Modex, obviously, from its inception. Tell us the basic idea behind it and, and how it came to be, really. Well, the basic idea was uh, to create a professional system to carry out uh, the exercises on European level. So to professionalize and to standardize the, uh, uh, the planning and uh, the implementation of the exercise. We really wanted to uh, bring together as many different teams from different countries as possible so that these, uh, these teams could uh, work together and uh, react to a simulated crisis. So MODEX overall should prepare the teams and the experts for an international deployment with all its, let's say, specific actors, specific procedures, and uh, also possible pitfalls. And that is then obviously, of course, why the exercises themselves are so important. Tell us a bit more. Yeah, the exercises are so important because uh, international deployment is uh, much more complex, I would say, than national deployment mm -hmm. because of all these specific actors, specific laws, new culture uh, and uh, language barriers, etc. So um, what is so important is that uh, the teams get the possibility to train before they actually go to a real uh, emergency, to a real disaster, because in this training condition, in this uh, exercise environment, I would say, uh, it is okay to make mistakes, so um, it is even part of the learning process to make mistakes and uh, the exercises, ideally, uh, the exercises would prevent that these mistakes mm -hmm. uh, or uh, problems uh, would occur in a real emergency. And uh, another very important point from my point of view is that MODEX also creates uh, important relationships between teams, between experts and even between countries on which you can rely up, uh, upon in the real emergency. Absolutely. Well, thanks for that. We're going to continue talking in just a second. But because there are so many different exercise modules to recognize on this occasion, we thought we would let some pictures speak louder than words.
some really gripping images there and so many different types of interventions. What strikes me, Anya, is the incredible complexity of these exercises. So what were the biggest challenges when you were actually getting this program off the ground? Yeah, looking at the footage, I also remember the challenges. Uh, first of all, it was a new approach uh, of which uh, decision makers like the European Commission itself, but also member states, had to be persuaded, right? And then uh, the amount of exercises and the amount of people involved significantly increased. So as you could see, there were like in one cycle, in one year, there are thousands of people involved in the exercises. So that is a challenge. And then... Uh, when the new program was created, we had to do it from the scratch. There was no prototype, there existed mm -hmm. no prototype. So you had to uh, anticipate uh, the details of the exercise, also uh, to have uh, a basis for an estimation of cost. So that's another challenge. Money, of course, was a challenge. Always. I think, yeah, we had uh, about two million euros in the beginning, which had to be earmarked. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those were the challenges and from the opera uh, operational point of view, I would say uh, the biggest challenge was to develop uh, a framework for exercises which are practical and realistic so mm -hmm. that there would be an added value to the teams. And what is it that's the innovative quality of, of EU Modex as an approach? Yeah, for the first time, uh, a uh, professional partnership of organizers came together also with private organizers and uh, they would organize several exercises. So uh, that is also that the framework of the exercise could be reused several times. And the system offers the possibility to constantly adapt and modify the exercises. Mm -hmm. So you could build in lessons learned from the previous exercise and uh, uh, the whole system allows that there's a constant improvement in the exercise, which I think is uh, quite good. Now, you were involved in three full cycles before returning to Berlin, if I'm not mistaken, and your last European field mission was in 2015, I think, at the, uh, uh, after the earthquake in Nepal. Are there any highlights from your time in the field that you'd like to share with us today? Well, the Modex highlights it's, as such, I would say the, the, today the, uh, the show here is a highlight uh, <laughs> of from this point of view. Um, Highlights for me were always when I when I heard about experts or teams uh, who participated in Modex and then met in the field and worked together successfully. Because uh, I think also that the um, cooperation and communication is much easier when the actors know each other. And that were also my personal highlights in the field whenever you're in the field, like I was in the Japan uh, earthquake and uh, I was, uh, it was very good when I, when I met uh, or when I, when I knew that uh, the team leaders, for example, of the International Urban Search and Rescue Team, I knew them and I could be sure that they would work very well together. Mm -hmm. But another highlight uh, uh, was that in 2014, I was in a Modex as an evaluator. Uh, and uh, during the exercise, the, uh, Slovenia was uh, hit by a natural disaster. It was a snowstorm. And so, uh, some of the experts literally jumped from the exercise directly into the emergency. Into action. Yeah, and it was really, really good because uh, they were sitting there together, like Slovenians and I think some Germans, and they said, OK, we have to go, but tomorrow we meet in Slovenia to respond uh, to the emergency. And I think, for me, that was Modex at its best. Now, just quickly, you have a legal background. How did you end up in civil protection? Ah, yeah, I, actually, I, I um, uh, started working uh, in a, with a ministerial background, uh, and I focused more on broad uh, security issues. And only later on, I specialized in civil protection and crisis management. And I think a legal background is actually very uh, useful. Advantageous. Yeah, no, it's very useful because it, uh, um, it enables me to uh, apply systematic approaches to new challenges, which is uh, kind of a key element in emergency planning, right? Now, I'm assuming that uh, civil protection is a, traditionally a pretty male-dominated field. Mm -hmm. is, is that changing? Well, during the times when I deployed uh, in international emergencies, I was always the only woman in the team. Okay. So I guess women are still underrepresented in uh, civil protection. I think uh, it kind of reflects the situation of the services at national level. If you look at the fire, uh, fire departments, for example, uh, th there is the majority is still male. And then you also have like medical teams where you find more women. I'm, as you said, a volunteer in THW, and they focus a lot on gender balance, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, they try to encourage women to participate. Um, 
but I still think there's uh, a lot of room for improvement. Okay, now just finally, based on your experience, how important would you say EU MODEX exercises are for EU civil protection moving into the future? Well, I think that uh, the pandemic shows that there's a lot of room for more cooperation mm -hmm. and uh, for mutual assistance. So um, I think that uh, more new teams, there are new threats in, in Europe and uh, new response teams have to be created. So uh, the exercises are definitely important for the development uh, uh, of civil protection in Europe. And uh, especially I believe that uh, new teams with new capacities might become part of MODEX. And uh, like this, the MODEX family would grow and I think it should grow. And uh, it's also something uh, which would be desirable from a political perspective, because I think um, well-trained and collaborating uh, European teams uh, which are deployed to the field, they are very visible and mm -hmm. they demonstrate kind of a solidarity between member states. And that is a reflection of the European idea. Well, thank you very much for all your hard work at the outset of this program. And thanks very much for being here with me today thank and you. joining us in the studio, Anja Brahman. Thank you. Well, after an entire year of dealing with the disruption of the coronavirus pandemic, most of us have gotten used to virtual birthday parties. And we received, of course, loads of birthday wishes from across Europe. So let's hear from some of the civil protection teams in Estonia, Romania, Germany, Poland and Finland. Happy birthday, Modex. Greetings from Estonia. I'm so ready. We'll see you soon. Greetings from Romania. We make part of the upper industry. For us, Modex means anticipation. Also, Modex means working against the clock. Furthermore, Modex means collaboration and team. Last but not least, Aeromodex means friendship. We are looking forward to every exercise. Setting up the base of operation is a trial of our team. Together we grow as a team. Aeromodex is the path to our excellence in civil protection and we are very happy that we worked together with you in many exercises and we are looking forward to new experiences. Happy birthday Aeromodex! Ten years modules exercises, that means ten years of challenges, great experiences and teamwork. For me, this is European cooperation at its best. And it's good to be part of it with THW. So happy birthday Modex and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again. Thank you for ten years in the Modex family. It is a great pleasure to cooperate with professionals and experts in a high quality training, creating a better future for civil protection environment. Best wishes from the State Fire Service of Poland. Congratulations, Modex. Greetings from Finland. Uh, the Finnish team turning up the heat in their portable sauna there, complete with fireworks. And another expert has joined me in the studio now, and he's also from Scandinavia. Martin Thompson heads the DEMA Emergency Services College at the Danish Emergency Management Agency, and they work very closely with the EU and the UN and also deploy abroad. And it is absolutely wonderful to have him here in the studio with me to tell us a bit more. Welcome, Martin Thompson. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Though so we are conducting uh, <laughs> uh, cold exercises in Denmark, we, uh, we cannot challenge our can't, Finnish colleagues. Can't hold a candle no. to the Finns. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's 
That's amazing. I want you to tell me, you've got this unique exercise training ground in Tinglev in southern Denmark. Can you tell us um, a little bit of, about how that started and why it's still such an innovation today? Yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for asking me because it was actually the, f the first uh, head of college uh, who got the idea to train as your fight. Um, we are back in the 1950s um, and um, uh, the idea was to build a part of a city, uh, not only a single house or, or single detached houses, but um, a part of a small city. Um, so um, we have extended that during uh, the 1950s uh, up till today and have around 130,000 square meters now, uh, which consists of an old city, um, a newer built city mm -hmm. uh, with precast concrete and also an industrial site. Um, so it's a pretty big area actually. That's absolutely amazing. Now the scale of disasters, of course, has changed over the course of your career. How would you say that has affected the types of exercises that you're conducting there? In the beginning, uh, we focused on uh, urban search and rescue exercises. Mm -hmm. um, and then it uh, also went to emergency medical hospitals. And in recent years, member states have uh, responded to, um, to uh, torrential rains and floodings and, and uh, also wildland fires. Um, so, so the challenge now is how we can um, incorporate um, climate change into mm -hmm. our exercises. Um, and it gives itself, we saw that uh, on some of the videos, that uh, it's not that easy to just put a forest on fire. So the, the challenge is how to actually train the teams because the coordination uh, that takes part among the, the team members and the, the teams as such is pretty much the same. Now, these situations are obviously hugely challenging to coordinate. How do you train that? Well, um, we are very close to the Danish-German border, fortunately. Um, so, uh, so it's very easy uh, for us to, uh, to um, create a realistic environment um, mm -hmm. where you can tra um, uh, train together with those who are actually doing their jobs. And the also cross-border. Yeah, exactly. The customs guys, the police, um, um, and also uh, the veterinarians when you are bringing uh, Mo and his friends um, um, aboard to, uh, with the rescue dogs. Uh, so, so therefore, um, it is actually a, an advantage to be as close uh, to the border as uh, the Emergency Services College. You just mentioned the dogs. I mean, they're uh, USAR dogs. They're obviously incredibly important uh, to the search and rescue operations. They are. Uh, they are indeed, and, and um, it, it, it might look um, very cozy and, and fine when they are running around and, and, and searching for people, but I can assure you it's, it's actually it's, it's difficult to train the dogs. And not every dog is uh, fitted for the purpose, um, but we, um, um, we, have, we are relying on the dogs to, uh, to get in quickly so that we can find the people when we arrive on scene. Some of the teams who have responded to the incident might have been um, half a day um, or, or more uh, on the road or in the air, by the way. Um, so when they, when they come, they have to find the, those who have been trapped in the, in the, uh, in the buildings as quick as possible. Incredib incredible animals. Now, looking at how some of these exercises are actually performed, there's a lot of, there's a lot of real risk and real stress involved in what you're doing there. Well, training realistically, you have to, uh, you have to accept some risk. Um, but as venue managers, um, we have, of course, security personnel on site so that we, we can assure that if it gets too realistic, uh, then they will intervene and, and, and stop the, uh, the teams that are doing something may maybe wrong. Um, so so th that's actually um, a factor that we look very, uh, very much into. Um, and, and yet the ability to make mistakes has to, has to be there. It has to be there because they have to take into consideration how they can establish a safe work site mm -hmm. because that's actually also part of the exercise for the teams to establish a safe work site. Um, coming back to the, the, the factor of stress, um, that is also a, 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 a crucial part of the exercise. We talk about thrownness, uh, where the mm -hmm. incident commanders or the team leaders within a, a short uh, time has to create reason uh, in chaos. 
Um, so um, training this is crucial to be effective. Mm -hmm. an, an incredible lucidness that's needed. One statement that, that I heard from uh, one of the teams stands out. The, somebody said, EU Modex isn't just an exercise, it's a happening. Tell us why, why it's so important, why the social aspect of the exercises is so important. Well, um, EU, um, the EU system uh, or the EU community uh, is very crucial uh, uh, for the effectiveness, I would say. Um, you could call it a surrogate uh, family. Um, I haven't been on one mission where I haven't known someone of those who mm -hmm. have uh, responded to, um, to the uh, disaster. Um, so, so going out there knowing that you are actually going to meet someone who have, you have been on course with, who you might have trained with, um, um, or educated uh, on the numerous, numerous uh, courses we have conducted, uh, or even been on mission with before, that, uh, that gives uh, um, a certain feeling of confidence when, when, you, um, mm -hmm. when you work in a harsh environment. Martin Thompson, thanks so much for being with us and for, for sharing all of these insights. Uh, and all the best to you in 2021, and stay safe. Thank you for having me. Well, on the political level, it's the interior ministries and civil protection departments of the member states who are best placed to know the true value of EU MODEX exercises. That they're an expression of European solidarity, where countries tackle crisis situations together, which is why there's a great deal of collective pride on the occasion of this MODEX milestone. Je voulais dire un mot particulier aujourd'hui pour la coopération européenne en matière de sécurité civile en vous remerciant, vous les agents de la sécurité civile, de faire naître et de faire vivre cette coopération. Pendant la crise sanitaire, évidemment, où la solidarité européenne est de mise, mais aussi dans les événements dramatiques que nous connaissons en Europe et en dehors de l'Europe. J'ai bien sûr euh, en image ce euh, moment tragique qui était euh, les opérations d'intervention de la sécurité civile au Liban dans un cadre euh, européen. Alors merci à toutes et à tous. Faites vivre l'Europe, faites vivre la sécurité civile, vous faites notre fierté à tous. It is an honor to be here with you to celebrate a successful story of the European cooperation in the field of civil protection. When a natural or man-made disaster strikes in Europe or in third countries, the national and European civil protection services are always ready to help. Because of joint trainings and exercises under the EU MODEX program, the responders are well trained to assist in a very demanding and complex environment of international emergencies. Our common goal is to strengthen EU resilience to natural and man-made disasters. While doing that, we must not forget about the good practices, our common successful stories. The EU MODEX is one of them. Slovenia is very proud to be part of the MODEX exercises from the very beginning. We are determined to continue working together to prepare the members of the European civil protection community for future emergencies. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on the 10th anniversary of EU MODEX. Have an excellent celebration and I wish you all the best in the future. In the last 20 years, Portugal has always a native role in the European mechanism for civil protection. Even in the last years, you supported the new rescue uh, agenda. That's why now, as we are celebrating 10 years of MODEX exercises, we would like to address all of the partners which had a native role in these kind of exercises, saying how this preparation work is a huge expression of European solidarity. You, we should be prepared prepared to act in crisis management, prepared to react to crisis situations. In, uh, in forest fires, like Portugal received support in 2017. And as we had be active in IT a few years ago in Mozambique, and even this year supporting Croatia in the last earthquake. This is an, an idea of a Europe acting together to support on difficult times, acting together 
act in rescue, acting together, managing crisis situation. That's what means MADEX preparing for acting together. As we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the module's exercises within the Union Civil Protection Mechanism, let me take this opportunity to reflect briefly on some points we have achieved over the past years. The European Civil Protection Mechanism was established 20 years ago, in October 2001, and has developed rapidly since then. It became an important tool for facilitating a rapid and efficient European response to disasters, and also for increasing prevention and preparedness capabilities within the European Union. Those colleagues who met in 2008 and 2009 and developed the modules exercises laid the groundwork for a strong and sustainable system, which became an integral part of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. Since then, hundreds of civil protection petitioners have participated in the tabletop exercises and the field exercises. They improved their performance and built networks, both of which are important for optimizing the response to disasters. It's a great pleasure for me to congratulate all the people involved over the last 10 years in the modules exercises for the success you have achieved over the past decade. And I want to thank all of you very much for your outstanding commitment. Well, when you talk to civil protection team members around Europe about their MODEX experiences, words like teamwork, collaboration, family and friendship keep cropping up, showing that EU MODEX enhances not only technical expertise, but also the kind of cross-cultural exchange that has enduring value. And here's some heartfelt messages from Belgium, Bulgaria, Austria, Ireland and Latvia. Happy birthday from Belgium! Greetings from Bulgaria. Congratulations on 10 years of EU MODEX. I have so many good memories from the field exercises and I wish that we could be together. I hope you're all healthy and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again, hopefully soon. Here is how we celebrate the occasion. Dear EU Models friends, together we can do more. Keep walking. Happy birthday, Modex! Best greetings from Styria, the green heart of Austria. We are ready to meet you back in Eisenherz. For us, all Modex means challenges and learning opportunities. Meeting friends and colleagues. A common approach and cross-cultural exchange. Team working. A big family. See you soon in Styria. Happy birthday! Congratulations EU Modex on your 10 year anniversary from everyone at Cork City Fire Brigade, Ireland. Dear colleagues and friends, the State Fire and Rescue Service of Latvia congratulates MODEX on its 10th anniversary. Noting that these years have been spent in a productive atmosphere. For us, MODEX is a great opportunity to meet a large family of EU rescuers. Not only to exchange experience and develop skills, but also to meet the enthusiasm, creativity and joy of work of colleagues in an area as important as saving lives. May the future of MODEX be successful.
In recent years, disasters have affected literally every region of Europe, causing hundreds of casualties and billions in damage to infrastructure and the environment. Well, storms, flash floods, forest fires, earthquakes and other disasters put countries' response systems under pressure, and normally the member states can help each other out. But when a threat like the coronavirus overwhelms several countries at the same time, that's when the Resc EU reserve kicks in. In the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, the EU was criticized by the media for reacting slowly and poorly. Over the past several months, the EU civil protection mechanism has stepped in to speed up, coordinate and co-finance the delivery of over 15 million items of assistance to 30 countries in order to support their COVID-19 response. Member states have provided personal protective equipment, ventilators, the reinforcement of medical staff, or, more recently, vaccines. In response to the pandemic, the EU created a new medical stockpile as well. The RESC EU reserves of medical equipment are currently located in nine EU member states. The European Commission finances 100 percent of the assets, including storage and transport. Following months of difficult technical and political negotiations, the clear message is that step by step we build our common future with more prevention, with more solidarity. We create an effective and strong civil protection mechanism for all the European citizens. Rescue you means that together we are stronger under any conditions. The Resc EU medical reserves include different types of medical equipment, such as protective masks or medical ventilators used in intensive care. This equipment can be distributed across Europe at times of medical emergencies and is constantly replenished. The Emergency Response Coordination Center in Brussels coordinates the distribution of the supplies based on the needs expressed by countries requesting EU assistance under the EU Civil Protection Mechanism. This ensures that it goes where it is most needed. The ERCC also manages the transfer of patients between EU member states or to neighboring countries. To fight the coronavirus on a global scale, a temporary humanitarian air bridge has been set up. It has facilitated more than 65 flights to 20 countries in Africa, Asia and the Americas with vital equipment and medical staff. The flights are funded by the EU and operated in coordination with member states, humanitarian organizations and the receiving states. Recently, the European Commission announced that it will set up an EU vaccine sharing mechanism to structure the distribution of vaccines shared by member states with partner countries. The EU is also developing a new platform for sharing knowledge, best practices and lessons learned by civil protection experts and emergency management personnel. In doing so, the EU intends to strengthen its disaster risk management to be prepared for future pandemics and other global crises. And I'm joined by Dr. Ra'ed Arafat, who is Secretary of State and Head of the Department for Emergency Situations at the Ministry of Internal Affairs in Romania. He's an ardent MODEX supporter and also an expert in disaster medicine, and he's been a leading figure in the European response to COVID. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Arafat. Thank you for inviting me. Now, the EU civil protection mechanism was upgraded, in fact, with the RESC EU reserve in 2019 to enhance the management of emerging risks, just in time, it seems, in light of the pandemic in 2020. But there has been some criticism of Europe's response, as we just heard in that report, particularly with the vaccine rollout. What's your synopsis of how it's performed? In my opinion, Europe at the end performed well. We work together. Though at the beginning, maybe each country tried to sort out the problem on its own. We had some restrictions created in each country, which affected other countries and so on. But that was at the beginning. Then we started really working together and we started seeing how things can become better if we create things together. One of the issues was rescue. 
Rescue was a, a, a project that we discussed about in the last two years before the, the pandemic. But then Romania was the first country to install the first stockpile for rescue, masks and ventilators. Then Germany came in. Now there are several other countries getting involved, which is very positive. We sent on behalf of the EU Continue. materials and equipment to other countries from, from the EU to Italy, to Spain, to Lithuania and to many other countries that requested that, uh, that support. As for the vaccine, I think that the way we work together to purchase the vaccine as a unit, as the European Union, helped each of our countries to have access equally to the vaccine. I think that if we wouldn't have done this this way, the smaller countries would have suffered in accessing the vaccine in time. So I would say that the EU at the end performed well. Okay, so that's the first good news. Now, when it comes to ensuring a quicker and more comprehensive response to an emergency, what lessons would you say you've learned from the EU, EU's COVID response? Well, I think that we need to work together from the beginning. We need to start faster planning and working when there is an emergency, which means that we need to prepare beforehand. We need to be better prepared. We need to be ready and we need to have all the mechanisms there so that once there is an emergency, we respond immediately. The first way is to prepare, to prevent, but when it is there, we need to respond. And the response should be, from the beginning, a common and well-coordinated response. We're obviously in a better uh, position to, to figure that out now, obviously for future uh, uh, catastrophes. But climate change, of course, is expected to worsen the impact of many disasters in the future. What moves are afoot to strengthen Europe's civil protection pool? And what does this mean specifically for training exercises like MODEX? Well, it's clear that in order to work together and to coordinate together, we need to exercise. No exercises. It means that when there is a disaster, we'll be, we will be trying then to do things together and maybe even we will fail because we didn't exercise. So climate change will have a huge impact and we all know that. Prevention is one issue, but preparing and response is another issue that we need. And working together, whether through the common voluntary pool of the EU CPM or whether through the rescue you and stockpiling and different other ways like firefighting, forest firefighting and uh, common assets to, to respond. We need to exercise all the time. And I think that this is very important from mm -hmm. this point of view. The MODEX exercises allow us to know each other, to know our procedures, to develop them, to, to work on common procedures and common approach for the future mm -hmm. to respond correctly to disasters all to them. Okay, you organized the largest medical MODEX ever conducted in 2018 in Romania. Now, that was not on a, on a specific training ground, but it was actually in Bucharest, a living city where daily life was really going on. Give us an idea how challenging it was to organize an exercise like that. Well, we already, uh, before that MODEX exercise, we did two completely unannounced exercises two years before that exercise, before the MODEX one. And that means just picking up the phone, telling the head of the fire and rescue and telling our colleagues, an exercise just started, we have a major earthquake or we have a major situation and we will start responding. And we saw a lot of things that needed to be corrected and we learned a lot of lessons. So when it came to the MODEX 2018, normally it, uh, it should have been held in another country, but there were some technical issues and Romania accepted to take over and to organize it in Romania, but to combine it with the Romanian exercise, national exercise on earthquake, and to combine the MODEX with it as if it is the international aid coming to Romania, which was very realistic. And I would say that uh, though it was hard with all our colleagues, we had only three months to plan, which usually you would have two years to plan. But with our colleagues from the police, from the gendarmerie, from all the other institutions, the military that were involved and so on, we succeeded to run the exercise real time in, within the same city that something may happen because Bucharest is a highly earthquake prone city. And I think we learned a lot of lessons because we did it this way. When you go to mm -hmm. training grounds, it's one thing. When you use the real ground when things may happen, 
I think that you learn much more from there. And this is what happened in Romania. So it was challenging, but it was worth worthwhile. We heard earlier uh, on in the program how Modex is really an example of European solidarity in action. On the occasion of this 10th anniversary, what's your vision for Modex for the next decade? I think we need to develop Modex further. We need to go to next steps. We need to embed into Modex new technologies of exercising and training. And we need to go out of the box. For example, we, we are used to Modex exercises on floods, to Modex exercises on earthquakes. If we didn't have had, if we didn't, if the pandemic didn't happen in 2020, we would have had a major pandemic exercise in Romania, an outbreak combining it with another two countries in May under MODEX. So I think that we need to start thinking of pandemics. We need to start thinking of outbreaks. We need to start thinking of nuclear and radiological emergencies, not only the classical ones that we were used to train on. So MODEX should be a very good future enabler for us to train better and to get better prepared for a variety of emergencies, mm -hmm. not only for the classical ones, especially for those that we say about them, high impact, low probability emergencies. Those emergencies that nobody expects, but if they take place, they would have a huge impact on us and they need to find us very well prepared. Thank you very much for those insights and do stay safe, Dr. Rayed Arafat in Bucharest. Thank you very much. Well, it's a testament to its importance that a number of VIPs with vast operational experience on the ground have also taken the time to congratulate EU Modex, and we would like to share some of those messages with you as well. Next up, some words from our UN colleagues in Geneva, and congratulations also from Nikos Haradalias, who's Deputy Minister for Civil Protection in Greece. Solidarity is a founding principle of the European Union and the Union Civil Protection Mechanism is the cornerstone and perhaps the most prominent and noble expression of that principle. Nothing serves to prepare us more effectively than well-planned exercises, in addition to providing a realistic training environment for modules, EU MODEX exercises are a formidable opportunity for improving processes and lines of communication. In the last decade, Civil Protection Greece has organized several simulations and our modules have participated in MODEX trials around Europe within the framework of the National Crisis and Hazard Management Mechanism that we established in February 2020. A radical improvement of Greece's comprehensive emergency management system will confirm our willingness for Greece to play an even more active role in EU MODEX. By working closer together in the face of nature's fury, we aspire to sustain a disaster response system that help save lives, protect property, and safeguard the environment. We have been particularly pleased with the very positive engagement between the emergency medical teams and the EU MODEX, which has allowed for mutual learning and exchanges of best practice, and the opportunities to assess and improve the alignment and integration of the civil protection mechanism and the emergency medical team's network of responders. Thanks to the generous support of DG ECHO, we have been able to run dedicated modular exercises for EMT's medical response capacities in the European region, including the coordination mechanism EMTCC. This has further strengthened the understanding of internationally agreed technical standards and mechanisms, focusing on providing quality of care in an emergency situation. WHO has been supporting the planning phase of the exercises and the simulation during the implementation phase. An important addition has been the participation of Mobile Lab into the MODEX, testing its interoperability with other medical assets. Going forward, our collaboration could be further expanded to include a wider range of the emergency workforce and to introduce different scenarios and coordination mechanisms to target the right level of operational readiness to overcome future challenges. WHO, the Emergency Medical Teams Initiative and its network look forward to the next 10 years of partnership. Congratulations again and let's continue to build our synergies and to strengthen emergency response in the region and beyond. Assistance to people will never be static. 
and we are constantly required to adjust our approach. A growing number of diverse partners are involved in emergency response operations, and it is UNDAC's role to find ways to embrace individuals, networks, and organizations in order to optimize the totality of all of these inputs. The UNDAC system combines local knowledge with international experience in the first phase of response, and it needs to adjust and it needs to keep changing to remain relevant. Participating in MODEX exercises will support us in reaching that goal. On matters of humanitarian assistance, the relationship between DG ECHO and OCHA are long-standing, with a well-established strategic dialogue. An administrative arrangement between DG ECHO and OCHA was signed in 2015 to enhance operational cooperation and coordination between the two entities. And in the spirit of this administrative arrangement, we should continue our close collaboration. We look forward to continuing to work with you in the future and wish you the very best of luck with your endeavours. Well, I think you'll all agree we can't have a birthday without music. And so it's time for a short musical interlude that resonates with all of Europe and beyond. Back in 1985, Beethoven's Ode to Joy was adopted as the Anthem of Europe by the European Union. And here's one of Germany's best youth orchestras, the Jungenstreicher Hamburg, with a rendition of that final movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, the Ode to Joy.
Support from decision makers at EU level has been crucial to the evolution of Modex over its first 10 years. And that support was never lacking from Christos Stylianidis. As Commissioner for Humanitarian Aid and Crisis Management from 2014 to 2019, he visited numerous Modex exercises in person to gain a better understanding of how they work. And here's his message on why the Modex family is essential to save lives. Dear friends, dear colleagues, dear former colleagues, dear forever colleagues, I would like to wish EU Modex and its people a happy 10th anniversary. It's a big day for all of us in this family. And uh, I had the privilege as former European Commissioner to see EU Modex in action in 2018 in Romania and also in 2019 in Croatia and Portugal, where our member states and our partner countries pull together people and resources and work side by side with incredible devotion and a unique sense of duty. This is what EU Modex means. So what we are celebrating today is much more than anniversary. It is Above all, 10 years of endless planning, training, exercising, and learning. Also, 10 years of constant progress in preventing, in preparing for, and responding to disasters, any type of disasters. Also, 10 years of commitment to saving lives and protecting properties and livelihoods. This is our duty, to save lives above all. And this is why EU Modex is much more than a group of accomplished professionals. It is a community of dedicated individuals, a vibrant family that keeps expanding and growing together. So, again, happy 10th anniversary EU Modex to the many years to come. This is our family. This is our to be together. This is our necessity, our duty, our dedication to be together. Togetherness is our motto. Thank you so much. Culture is a huge part of the interpersonal dimension of EU Modex, and the inner workings at DG Echo are living proof of that. And now it's time to meet a couple more of the faces of Modex within DG Echo. Donatella Salvi and Gerard Guerin are here with us on behalf of the Commission and as desk officers dedicated to EU Modex. They certainly know the whole system inside and out. Thanks to both of you for joining us, and welcome to the show. Great to be here, Karen. Thank you. Very good to be there. Hello, everybody. So Modex has been running for over a decade now, and it continues to develop and to grow. Jared, perhaps you can just tell us why it has been so very successful and perhaps what the secret is. Thank you, Karen. I think there's many reasons why um, EU Modex has been successful. First of all, Modex uh, is conducted as part of the European Civil Protection Mechanism Training and Exercise Program. And, um, you know, Modex over the years has continued to adapt and evolve to meet the needs of the mechanism and most importantly, the needs of the capacities participating in Modex. Modex is developed and evolved uh, through a very strong collaborative relationship between the Commission and the member and participating states. So, um, you know, we have a very strong uh, level of stakeholder engagement. But I think the most important thing that comes to my mind when I think of the success of Modex, I think of people. I think of uh, diversity, inclusion, professionalism, motivation and determination and the willingness of men and women across the 33 member and participating states that give freely of their time and effort to help people in their hour of need. Modex is one of the flagships of the European Civil Protection Mechanism. Modex is where European disaster response capacities come to train and exercise to be the best of the best at what they do. And Donatella, perhaps your thoughts on, on that question. 
Yeah, I can only echo what uh, Jared says. It's really also very much about the dedication and the commitment of people of our consortia, uh, who is um, very dedicated to deliver the uh, very best exercise for our expert and capacities. Now, Donatella, perhaps you can just also tell us, Jared spoke about uh, evolution. Tell us how it has evolved over the 10 years, because you've been there since 2010. Tell us some of the differences. Yes, Karin, the EU MODEX has evolved uh, along the European Civil Protection Mechanism, basically. It has evolved in, in quantity and in quality. The number of exercises uh, has increased over the years. The number of uh, participating experts and capacities has increased also, um, as well as the budget. And the quality of uh, EU MODEX exercises has significantly improved thanks to uh, a strong emphasis on evaluation and lessons learned. The aim has always been to meet the preparedness uh, uh, needs of the mechanism uh, to, and having, let's say, challenging exercise scenarios, um, very realistic, I would say, exercise scenario to challenge our experts and capacity to test them and to better prepare them for real international uh, deployments. Gerard, what is your take on, on the evolution of EU MODEX? Well, I, I think of the, the many long hours and weeks and the, the long discussions we have, um, not only together in the Commission, but the very strong collaborative relationship we have with our consortia. Um, this is the key, really, to developing and the relevance uh, of our exercises for the capacities that we serve. I can think of so many changes in recent years. I remember the largest ever medical field exercise which we conducted in Romania in 2018, which was a huge success. I recall the first forest firefighting exercise in Croatia. I recall the first flood rescue using boats exercise, which required hundreds of uh, casualties and role players to bring that exercise to life. So it's about evolving, adapting, and it's about the strong stakeholder engagement. Thanks very much. Now, Donna, tell back over to you. How badly has the pandemic disrupted operations in the current 10th cycle? Yeah, all our physical exercises were put on hold. Some exercises were cancelled and others postponed. No need to say that the impact of the pandemic on EU MODEX uh, has and still is significant. But between us, Karin, what has worried me most um, is Jared, no possibilities to travel, to be on the ground, and he was stuck at home, um, like a lion in a, in a cage, basically. Jared, you would, you would admit that is true, no? Yes, I, ha I have to admit, uh, I really have missed being in the field and uh, working closely with the stakeholders and with the participants of MODEX. However, on a serious note, we have you know, taken this opportunity to get involved in some very serious work. We have been working extremely hard over the past months with the member states and in the commission, developing the new training and exercise program. Uh, we also have you know, uh, undertaken a lot of new development work, exploring how we can use new technologies, such as virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, and new learning technologies, which we will hope to implement in MODEX into the future. Donatella, anything to add just briefly? Yeah, no, exactly. What, uh, what I would like to, to see for the future is uh, MODEX is, uh, is really done, that we grow and, uh, and, and we develop all together uh, as, a, as a community and as a family as MODEX has always been. Well, that's a great outlook for the civil protection community, for sure. Thanks to both of you for those insights from your separate locations. Keep up the great work, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the greeting videos from civil protection teams across the continent have been pouring in to congratulate EU MODEX on its 10th birthday. And not just greetings, as it turns out. But as you can see, our studio here is festooned with T-shirts and helmets, overalls and all kinds of things from all over Europe as teams have sent us pieces of their mission kit as souvenirs. So a huge thanks from us at this moment for these tributes and for the video messages. And as you can imagine, this is just a selection that we've received. We've got so many that we couldn't possibly show them all. But for good measure, here's a few more messages from Italy and the Czech Republic. Greetings from Ares. It's so good to see you. 
We wish we could be there with you. We can't wait until the next exercise. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again. I can't believe it's already been 10 years. We have so many good memories of Modex. We hope you are all healthy. <coughs> we'll see you soon. Congratulations on 10 years of EU Modex. We hope you are having a great time. Happy birthday, Modex! Hey! hey! My name is Vladimir Vucek. I am Chief Fire Officer of Regional Fire Rescue Brigade of Moravian Silesian Region. You can see USAR team and Water Siege and Rescue team. Both of those teams are certified within the civil protection mechanism and those teams participated many times on MODEX exercises. As well, organized those exercises in Ostrava. Unfortunately, MODEX exercise, which was planned for this year, was postponed through COVID-19. I wish you, all of you, stay healthy and see you again. Bye-bye. Ciao, Happy birthday, For us, Modex means M as mindset, change of point of view, O as opportunity to grow and to learn, D as demonstration of capabilities, E as experience to be better prepared and ready, X as extraordinary. As extraordinary is the Modex community made of European friends. We keep in mind so many good memories of Modex and we are looking forward to start again. A special greeting of our partner of Not2. And, and best, best wishes, wishes from, from the Monde. Ciao, Ciao. Bye, bye bye, see you soon. DG ECHO is the Directorate General that oversees Europe's disaster relief responses and hence the exercises that enable the proper preparation of response teams. Well, two directors in particular are championing the cause of EU MODEX. Ilka Salmi is Director for Disaster Preparedness and Prevention and Hans Das oversees the operations coordinated by the ERCC in Brussels and the RESC EU Reserve. And their messages for this occasion underscore its vital role for the future. It is here in the Emergency Response Coordination Center that European disaster response operations are launched and coordinated. Over the last few years, we have responded successfully to over 500 disasters across the world. Quality of assistance is therefore essential, and that is where the module exercises play a major role. And this means that the modules exercises have proven extremely important over the last few years. Almost all of the teams that we have deployed to disaster sites across the world have gone through the modules exercises beforehand. They have been trained um, together. They know how to cooperate and they know how to work together as one Team Europe on the ground. I hope that we can use today's anniversary to renew our commitment to the values and the objectives of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. And I look forward to seeing a whole new generation of civil protection colleagues participating in the modules exercises. Congratulations to all. I'm very proud of many, many colleagues who have contributed in shaping and developing the MODEX, EU MODEX exercises over the last 10 years. It's a really a major achievement. MODEX exercises are about bringing people together, people on the field, in the ground, to practice, to train, to learn from each other, and also to understand how to work together in one setting. It's about preparedness, it's about professionalism, and we have to be very clear that in this year, when we are just about to emerge, hopefully, from the COVID-19 pandemic, I think it's very obvious for all of us that we do need more preparedness, more cooperation across the borders. I would like to really to congratulate all of us for this work that we have done over the last 10 years to make our societies even safer and better prepared for any sort of an disasters or threats that we might face in the future. And I'm absolutely convinced that with the dedication of all of you, all of us, 
we will serve the European citizens in the best possible way. Well, both Hans Das and Ilka Salmi took part in the very first EU civil protection think tank that was held earlier this month. And it brought together experts from different areas of civil protection to brainstorm ideas for how to improve Europe's re emergency response system for the future. And with nearly 1,500 call-ups of the YouTube channel during the live stream, the interest from the community was enormous. Well, Patricia Gaspar is Secretary of State for the Ministry of Internal Administration in Portugal. She also took part in the think tank and it's a pleasure to welcome her to give us a quick overview of what they discussed. Warm welcome to you Patricia, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much Karen, likewise. Now just give us a quick overview, what came out of the think tank dis discussion? Are we in for big changes in the future of civil protection? Oh yes, definitely we are Karen. Uh, civil protection has no other option uh, but to align with the way the world is actually changing both it's nationally and globally, so it's changing dramatically. This think tank uh, has touched a couple of really important ideas on how we must follow the trends. We have new risks, new vulnerabilities and disasters with bigger and bigger impact in our lives. Climate change and COVID-19 are, for example, a huge heads up on how we must look into this into the future. And what is really important to underline is that changes are already happening. Uh, we cannot change the world in two days, but um, important steps are already being taken. We are investing in prevention and preparedness and not just on response. We are training more and more together. We are bringing knowledge and expertise into the system, and we are engaging more and more stakeholders coming from different perspectives. So um, good examples are the recent revision of the mechanism, which will allow uh, for the union to, to be more proactive and also the creation of the knowledge network. Um, so these are good examples, but I think we still have a long way to go. Now, the interesting thing is this was a really novel format, of course. What were the key learnings that you took away from this kind of gathering? I would like to pinpoint uh, five uh, important ideas. Uh, first, there's a great tune among most thinkers, and we are talking about people with loads of experience as emergency managers, nationally and internationally, which is a sign for me that it's possible to move forward. Secondly, the future will need a true political commitment, and without this engagement, uh, we won't be able to change things as they need to be changed. We need to break the silos that still break some of the links and the connections and work more and better together, bringing all the agencies and all the relevant stakeholders. Technology was uh, greatly uh, discussed and debated, uh, and it will play a critical role in the process, but it must be directed uh, for all the dimensions that we, we need to work, and it surely must come together with knowledge. So technology together with knowledge, it's really important. And lastly, regardless of the choices that we make in the future, we cannot forget the most important element of this process, which is the human factor. We exist to save lives, to protect lives, and we cannot forget this. That's uh, absolutely true. Now, there were a couple of really interesting statements during the think tank, and we've selected a couple to bring into this program. Let's see what Mike Ryan from the World Health Organization had to say. If you look at that, you don't know what to change unless you know how you did already. And if I look at some of the attributes of the current response, I would say uh, static, inflexible, overplanned, and under responsive. Um, uh, in a sense, we were focused to a great extent on capacities that were measurable capacities. We counted things. We're not as focused on the resilience and the adaptability and the, the, the flexibility of our systems to react and respond and change as the disaster changes. We're not prepared. That's right. And this response has only uncovered our weaknesses. It hasn't really taught us. It has taught us maybe how to fix them. We're not even close. We have to move away from seeing this as cost. Uh, we have to move towards seeing the investment, the anticipatory financing. So the challenge is to how to use that information that is available at the, the policy level and at the tactical level to improve the operational, the operational level, to improve emergency planning and disaster response. For example, 
Can we use machine learning and artificial intelligence to improve information management? Can we use it to improve public safety dispatch? In that direction, I think the, the Union Civil Protection Knowledge Network is surely an important step. I believe it can help in two ways. First, it will help us make better use of existing scientific and technological breakthroughs, many of which have been co-funded by the European Union through various instruments for that matter. And second, I think it will help us to identify the areas where future research could benefit civil protection in Europe. Now, we also heard there from George Karagiannis, Deputy Secretary General of the Greek Civil Protection, and some pretty sobering words from Mike Ryan there, Patricia. What are your thoughts on those statements? Well, I think those statements were really important among all the others that were shared uh, during the think tank. Uh, Mark uh, and George, they, they made us uh, think about uh, really important aspects uh, of uh, responding to disasters. First, we need to be honest. We need to actually uh, do a, a, a um, true lessons learned process to identify where and when we have failed and learn with those failures, learn with the mistakes and improve. We need to be more flexible. We need to use all the knowledge and all the, the information and data that we have uh, at our disposal to actually respond better. Mm -hmm. If disasters are changing, response needs to change. And we need to go along with these new trends, like I was saying before. So um, I think, yes, all, all, most of the statements that we heard were really important. And this that you just, um, that we just shared uh, really give us uh, good hints and good ideas on how we must work together in the future to actually be more proactive, more uh, flexible, and more effective also in responding to disasters. Exactly. Collaboration was a word that, that kept coming up during the think tank. Just quickly, Patricia, how energizing was this kind of gathering in terms of what you think it can achieve for civil protection in Europe? I think, Karen, the think tank was a great event, and I take this opportunity to actually congratulate everyone which was uh, involved. You know, emergency managers often have little time to stop and think, uh, and we do need moments like this, moments that force us to stop, to reflect and to share so uh, thoughts which are so important to all the community. There is so much we can take out of gatherings like this, hints, ideas, and thoughts that mm -hmm. institutions can then use to continue to sustain the important work that's being done. Um, some important words, like you said, were uh, permanently uh, being repeated during the same tank. Anticipation, imagination, cooperation, collaboration, flexibility, and the ability to adapt. So I think that we have a lot to work on the future uh, coming out of this uh, think tank. It was really a great event. Fantastic. Well, it's a format that can hopefully be repeated and looks like a big step taken towards a more collaborative and cross-sectoral approach in civil protection. Obrigado, Patricia Gaspar in Lisbon, and do stay safe. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, Karen. And now it's high time for a statement from the Commissioner for Crisis Management himself, Yanis Lenarcic. And for that, I'll hand over to my colleague, Katrina Zichel, who's in Brussels with the Commissioner right now. Over to you, Katrina. Thank you, Karen. Yes, I am indeed here in Brussels in the Emergency Response Coordination Centre with a very special guest. Now, this show is all about the EU MODEX journey, and this gentleman is best placed to tell us a few of the highlights from that journey and pinpoint a few of the challenges going forwards. So I'm now going to put my mask on so that I can engage in conversation with EU Commissioner Lenarcic. Hello, Commissioner. How Hello. are you today? Hello. Welcome to ERCC. Thank you so very much. I have a few questions, if I might put to you, please. The obvious first question is, what is the significance of the EU MODEX 10-year anniversary celebrations? And why is it particularly important for the civil protection community? The significance of this 10th anniversary of EU MODEX is its milestone how it evolved from modest beginnings into what is now a central pillar 
of European Union preparedness activities under the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. Preparedness is important in order to be able to respond effectively once the disasters strike. And I would like to thank on this anniversary occasion to all the members of our civil protection community because they are the ones who made this happen. Thank you. How, how does EU MODEX contribute to the European civil protection mechanism as a whole? What is its essential role? The essential role of EU MODEX is to prepare the personnel, equipment and other capacities of civil protection structures of all the participating states to be able to respond effectively to various disasters in a joint up manner, working with each other. And for that, we use, for example, field exercises so that they, we bring them together, we train them to work together, and thus we increase their effectiveness and efficiency when they're called on an international mission to respond to a disaster. You talk there about evolution at the beginning. So what do you think are the three major factors that will impact on the evolution of EU MODEX going forward into the next decade? First of all, the disasterless landscape is evolving very fast. We see the impact of the climate change and we'll see more of that in future. We already see the health emergency like the ongoing pandemic. We also have to get better prepared for threats to critical infrastructure, for instance. Uh, and when we are preparing for that, we also have to upgrade our union civil protection mechanism. And we are doing that. We are now in the process of strengthening this mechanism by giving it additional tools so as to better enable it to respond to what we see as the potential threats. When we analyze the potential threats, we also like to involve more closely the science community through our knowledge network, because they can contribute credible analysis of what the future may, may bring. And finally, uh, we would like to have this civil protection community of Europe more connected, more able to work with each other, to be like really one team. So let's talk highlights. Can you give me three of your personal highlights of which you're most proud in the last decade? I'm most proud of what EU MODEX has contributed to the development of what I would call human capital. Because through the EU MODEX, hundreds of experts and responders have been trained and prepared and thus enabled to respond more effectively to the uh, disasters that are coming. Second, through this um, uh, EU MODEX, we have really developed a brand which is now recognizable, not only in Europe, but also globally. And there is a good reason for that, because this is really a symbol of excellence in preparedness. And finally, uh, this EU MODEX has brought together the entire variety of national structures, personnel, and their equipment, and enabled them to work together in sync when disasters strike. Thank you very much. We heard the Commissioner there talk about the importance of people, of human capital, and we're now going to award some of the people who've made a particular contribution to EU MODEX in the last decade with the 10-year anniversary celebration EU MODEX Commemorative Award. I now have the pleasure to present the 10 years EU MODEX Commemorative Award together with Director for Preparedness and Prevention, Mr. Ilka Salmi. This award recognizes individuals for their active contribution to the development and the success of EU MODEX over 10 years. And the first is Anna Battens from the Belgian Directorate General for Civil Protection, who has been involved in EU MODEX since its very beginning. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Director. It is an honor for the Belgian Civil Protection and for myself, I feel very privileged today thinking of all the hundreds of international colleagues from civil protection 
with whom I had the honor to work the exercises and who cannot be here today, but who put all their hearts in their work. Pala Lepa, thank you. The next award is for Mr. René Wagemans, a Chief Exercise Controller for EU MODEX. Commissioner, Director, thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to dedicate this award also to all the colleagues who have been helping me throughout all this year uh, to make this MODEX a real success story. Thank you very much. And third, Mr. Tim Das, a medical expert who continues to support EU MODEX medical exercises all over the world. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Director. I'm very thankful to receive this award and I would like to extend this gratitude to all the colleagues I've worked with in the last years in organizing the MODEX. And I look forward to proceed this work to make even more successful and more realis realistic exercises. Thank you. I thank you for your incredible commitment and for your friendship to date. And congratulations for your well-deserved awards. So let me thank the Commissioner for his warm words and, of course, for being with us. And congratulations to all the award winners. And now back to the studio in Hamburg where the show continues. Thanks, Karen. Over to you. Thanks very much, Katrina, and to Commissioner Lenarchich for honouring this event in Brussels. The Commissioner emphasising there that EU Modex has become a globally recognised brand. And of course, it's also great to see some of the Modex participants recognised for their continuing commitment. And we are, in fact, very lucky to be joined by some additional award winners, two of whom you know already, Anja Brahman and Martin Thompson. And uh, welcome back to both of you in the studio. I'm assuming this is something of a surprise by the looks on your faces. It is yeah, a surprise. Sure. <laughs> well, welcome back to both of you. And congratulations because you are both, I have the honor of announcing, you're both recipients of the 10 Years EU Modex Commemorative Award. And that is for people who have gone beyond the call of duty in promoting and contributing to the development of Modex, which I dare say is true for the both of you. Now, needless to say, we are living in very tricky times. Bestowing an award in times of a pandemic is not an easy task, and I'm not even allowed to touch them, neither are you. But there they are in all their shining glory. And so perhaps I can just ask you, uh, Anya, on this occasion, congratulations. Please, can you say a few words? Yeah, thank you very much. Honestly, I didn't know about it, so I'm really, really surprised. Uh, I'm very happy, and uh, I have to say I'm very proud uh, to be a member of the Modex family. Well, we're certainly very proud to have you and so happy to have you physically here in the studio despite all these difficult conditions. Martin Thompson, a few words from you on uh, receiving this award after all your, your many years of hard work. Yeah, well, thank you very much and I happily accept the, uh, the award uh, and carry it. Um, uh, remembering all the, the years I've been working with, with colleagues uh, from the EU member states and, and also for my my team back in, in Tinglev at the Emergency Services College who have, um, well, strived to uh, give these exercises as much reality Indeed. as they have actually be been. And I think you can take uh, our collective congratulations with you back to those teams because, of course, uh, one cannot act alone no. in these kinds of exercises, as we well know, many, many people involved. And one more time, just let me say heartfelt congratulations to both of you. Thanks so much for being here with us in the studio as physical beings. And here's to the next 10 years of EU Modex. Thanks for all your great work. Thank you, likewise. Well, social distancing is the modus operandi for 2021, and so I'm letting these two take their leave so that we can bring in our next two recipients. Alexander Drexel, who is accepting on behalf of the EU Modex media teams, and Ham Bastian Harms, who's a senior advisor to the UCPM and director of the EU Modex Consortia 3 and 5. And both of you, of course, are based here in Germany and have been very involved in getting this show uh, off the ground and put together. Together. First of all, my heartfelt congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. And Alexander, perhaps on behalf of the many media teams out there, could you just say a few words uh, upon receiving this, this uh, beautiful award? It's really a great honor to receive this award for the media work within the EU and Modex. And uh, on behalf of all the photographers, cameramen, 
social media managers, uh, editors, assistants and producers, I say thank you for this award. And also thank for EOMODIX for the opportunity to bring this cross-border commitment of thousands of men and women involved in the European Civil Protection Mechanism to the public. It's really a great honor to be a small part of this family. And especially very cool of all of them to have uh, to have dealt with having cameras following them around while they're actually actually doing these incredibly uh, uh, stress-filled exactly. exercises. It's really yeah. an incredible thing. I hope you'll take our collective congratulations back to all of those teams as well uh, and uh, tell them that keep to keep up the great work. Thank you, Ham Bastian. Over to you uh, because obviously after all the effort that you've put into these ten years, it, I'm sure you have some words not just about the award, but also to your community out there. Yeah, thank you, Karin. Uh, I consider that EOMODEX is one of the most realistic and highly developed exercise programs for civil protection capacities in the world. And it's uh, definitely um, showing your, uh, European solidarity and uh, collaboration um, amongst the modules uh, for the benefit of our fellow citizens in Europe. Um, we use the time of the pandemic-based interruption very wisely for uh, developing EOMODEX further. And one uh, of the examples is uh, uh, our new scenarios. And in addition, we have a new exercise control tool. And um, as well, we are just uh, starting to develop the first virtual reality EOMODEX on avalanche search and rescue. So to uh, all of the audience, I have to say, uh, see you soon and on an EOMODEX. <laughs> Coming back to the award, I'm feeling very much honored uh, for uh, receiving this award, but to organize high quality exercises is always a team effort. So I think the honor is as well on side of our team. Well, a huge thanks to the team and a, and a hip hip hooray for the teams, really, because it's a very, very special occasion. Our congratulations also uh, to all of the people that you need to, uh, to communicate this to. Congratulations on getting this award. And thanks to both of you for making this event happen, despite the very challenging times that we are experiencing. Well, just a quick note for our viewers, the awards that we've just seen are only seven of 105 MODEX awards that will be given out after this program. So congratulations go out, of course, to all of our winners and be sure to keep up the great work. We're so glad that we could make this event happen. And after Ham Bastian, of course, we'd like to give the floor to his colleagues, the other key MODEX leaders, because these are the people who are implementing the exercises on the ground. People, many of you, will have built connections with. So let's hear what MODEX has meant to them over the past decade. Thank you, Karim. It is an honor for me to be here with the MODEX Consortia representatives on this special uh, occasion. Uh, my past experience with MODEX as a trainer, venue manager, and project manager allows me to say that 10 years of running MODEX exercises, it's a proof that together the member states and the participating states can develop a sustainable state-of-the-art training platform for the European response capacities. Uh, as I recently joined the European Commission as a seconded national expert responsible with the MODEX files, I look forward to continue working together with these amazing people. I'm pleased to pass it to Susanne now. Thank you, Vlad. I'm happy to be here for 10 years of EU MODEX representing the module's tabletop exercise consortium composed of civil protection agencies and colleagues from Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Denmark, France, Slovenia, Germany, and nowadays also from Portugal. I'm happy that we support since 10 years our module's key personnel and EU civil protection experts preparing for their international missions. We appreciate being part of a group sharing the common objectives, providing efficient assistance to people in need. In this regard, the tabletop exercises would not have been possible without the engagement and commitment of all the trainers, evaluators, venue managers, role players, and many more out there. Thanks to all of you, and I would like to pass on to my dear friend Marcel in Romania now. Thank you, Henry. In this changing world, affected more and more by different types of disasters, to be prepared is a must. And MODEX was and is part of creating this must at the EU level. I do believe that LOT2 Consortium has contributed substantially to enhancing EU response capacity by expanding the area of training, by daring more, 
thinking outside the box, modernizing coaching methods, and continue challenging the participants. At the end of these 10 years, I believe we are all Modex. So, happy birthday, Modex. And now I pass to my uh, fellow in consortia, to Emma. I am so pleased to be with you all today here, celebrating as given to those who deserve it, and you do. So I wish you all a happy 10 years anniversary. Cheers to future achievements and past glories of Modex activities. And let's hope for the best in the coming years for the European civil protection family. Now we hand it over to our friends in the North. Hello, everybody. It's a fantastic opportunity to sit here representing lot four that is targeting EU experts and technical assistance and support teams. One of the more recent Modex that has been developed during these 10 years. Uh, it's also a pleasure to see that Modex has taken a specific place in the training program from the European Union, including the courses. So it's absolutely fantastic to be here and represent uh, with all the good colleagues. And uh, I will hand over to my other friend uh, up here in the north, uh, Mario. Thank you, Peter. Um, as a representative of Consortia 3 and 5, I'm very happy to say happy birthday to all members of the civil protection community. Within the last 10 years, I was a ghost with the wide Wests evaluating the Modex exercises, heading now the competence center of EU civil protection and disaster assistance of Ianiter makes me proud to be now part of the family. Modex for me means it's not only being a family member. For me, Modex is the example to see the European solidarity and collaboration of member states and participating states. Modex is also for me seeing a huge and fast progress in civil protection development. So let's continue. And now back to you, Karin. Well, thanks very much to you, Mario. And thanks, of course, to all of you for your greetings and your birthday wishes. And uh, all the best to all of you for the next part of the Modex journey. Well, we've seen a lot of different EU Modex teams in action and heard from a lot of experts, but you will have noticed that some of those team members actually have four legs. USAR dogs are a vital part of search and rescue operations, so much so that EU Modex has given one of them a starring role. Hi, my name is Mo. You might have heard of me. I'm kind of the top dog around here, and I'm a big fan of EU Modex. I was just a dog hanging out with my local civil protection team, dreaming of changing the world. And then I got the call. Now I'm part of the Modex family. I can't wait to be in the thick of these exercises with you all again. But since we're forced to wait, why don't I tell you a little bit about myself? My development started in October of 2019, when Modex realized that they needed me. In the beginning, they wanted to make me a T-Rex. Can you believe that? But I told them, hey, T-Rexes eat people. Make me a dog instead. Everyone loves dogs. So they made me a dog. But which kind of dog? As you know, rescue dogs come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. But after thinking about it, they realized I'm a Border Collie. Well, I'm glad that's settled. By the way, do you know how hard it is to be humble when you have my dashingly good looks? Well, the fact is that I owe all of my beauty to two things, brushing my teeth twice a day and the amazing work of illustrator Niels. Thanks, Niels. So here I am. But even the best rescue dog is in trouble if he doesn't have any tools. That's why the crew outfitted me with all the different gear I might need to participate in every kind of Modex event. A helmet to keep my noggin safe, a shovel to reach those hard to get to spots, a hose to pump water from here to there, a radio to communicate with my team, and so many more. And you know what? I'm loving this life. I'm always helping out during the Modex events and keeping active at my local civil protection squad. But actually, my most important job is to spread our message to the world, because I'm the EU Modex ambassador. I'm always so excited to get out there and tell everyone how great it is to work with EU Modex and how important the work that we are doing really is. So now you know my story. I don't blame you if you're a little bit starstruck by me now. But hey, I'm just a humble, down-to-earth dog. Thanks for being a part of my EU Modex family. Stay safe, and I can't wait to see you all again soon. 
Wait a second. Do I smell something sweet coming our way? Well, a brand new mascot as EU Modex heads into its next decade. And from what I hear, Mo here has had a very positive response, and that's not surprising. Well, that does bring us to the end of this anniversary special. With a keener understanding of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism as one of the cornerstones of European solidarity and of module exercises as key to a coordinated disaster response that saves lives and keeps up with the times. Well, to the hundreds of civil protection experts who have demonstrated their commitment over the years, hats off to you, happy birthday EU Modex, and here's to getting back into action for another successful decade. Thanks to all of our viewers out there for tuning in, all the best, and be sure to stay safe. Tschüss aus Hamburg and bye-bye. <laughs>